Hi folks, we're continuing on in Acts. Have you ever said, I'm a good person, I don't lie, I don't cheat, I don't hurt anybody, I try to do what is right? I've heard that a lot in my lifetime. And then others will say, well, I'm not as religious as you. I'm thinking religious. Okay, I understand. Same thought, same pattern runs through my mind. Now, if you remember the Jews, they followed the law and the traditions of the elders. Uh, the books of Moses, the first five books, and if you obeyed those, you were a good Jew or a good person. However, your insides could be rotten, disgusting, filthy, and completely black inside. Your thoughts could be Anger, lust, greed, resentment. But you was an okay person because outwardly you observed everything that was possible to look like a fine person. Sometimes sin, well, not sometimes, sin is deceiving. Oh, I'm not that bad. Hey, that person's worse than me. Or, hey, you know, God provided this for us, for me. Why not do it if he's provided it? I was once under a young pastor many, many years ago. And this guy moved on from the church that my wife and I attended. He went to another church, him and his wife. After some time, he hired on an assistant, a female assistant. And long before time went, he had an affair. This is what he told his wife. God brought her into my life. Ah, let's think about this. God brought this other woman in your life so that you could commit adultery with her and have a divorce with kids. Somehow, to me, it doesn't make any sense. However, once again, sin is blinding. And we can either be naive, ignorant, or however you want to term it. But God sees our heart. We can't fool Him. We may be able to fool other people. Other people may see us for what we are. But the point is, it takes a personal relationship with God in some form, like the one we're about to look at now. This involves a Gentile, one of us, not a Jew. This is in chapter 10. Then there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment. He, a devout man, and one who feared God with all of his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius, and when he observed him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? So he said to him, Your prayers 
and your alms have come up for memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa and send for Simon Peter, whose surname is Peter. Excuse me. Send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging with Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what you must do. And when the angel who spoke to him had departed, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier from among those who waited on him continually. So when he explained all these things to them, he sent them to Joppa. The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Then he became very hungry and wanted to eat, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened up and objects like a great sheep bound at the four corners descending to him and led down to the earth. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creepy things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And a voice spoke to him again the second time, What God has cleansed you must not call common. And this was done three times, and the object was taken up to heaven again. Now, while Peter wondered within himself, what was this vision which he had seen met? Behold, the men who had been sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. And they called and asked whether Simon, whose surname was Peter, was lodging there. While Peter thought about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, go down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men who had been sent to him from Cornelius and said, Yes, I am he whom you seek. For what reasons have you come? And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, one who fears God and has great, one who fears God and has a good reputation among all the nation of Jews, was divinely instructed by a holy angel to summon you to this house and to hear words from you. Then he invited them in and lodged them. On the next day, Peter went his way with them and with brethren from Joppa accompanied him. So here we have Cornelius, a Gentile, a centurion, who's like an enlisted guy, a sergeant. And it says in verse 2, he was a devout man and one who feared God with all of his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. This sounds like a real guy giving generously, treating his household, his soldiers, and praying to God. It sounds like a man that found something, a meaning to life, a purpose, a God who loves him so much that he's willing to love others the way that God has blessed him. Verse 3, about the ninth hour of the day, which would probably be about 3 o'clock our time, he's clearly, excuse me, he saw clearly a vision, an angel of God coming 
in and saying to him, Cornelius? And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? Once again, we, if we saw an angel and knew it, would probably respond the same way. But unfortunately for us, or fortunately for us, angels come as normal people nowadays. I know for a fact in my past, I've encountered three angels that were had physical bodies like we do. And the only way we could tell is one of them was at a shelter. He had a guitar and he sung in the Jewish language. And we was over at a, another pastor's house and I met him for about two or three days and I went to pick him up for church service that following week and when I went in there I asked for him and they had no registration of anybody who resembled this guy. That was another time my wife and I was at a McDonald's and this guy was asking for money. So I gave him about five dollars he pulled out, and he had a car. He pulled out on the street. We heard the squeals, but the car was gone that quick. I had just forgotten the other time. But angels do appear nowadays. Maybe not like in the book of Acts, but they're around doing God's work with us to advance the kingdom. So Cornelius sees this angel. What is it, Lord? So he said to him, Your prayers and your alms have come up for memorial before God. Wow. God has seen what this guy has been doing. He sees his heart. He's not abiding by the first five books of the uh, Bible. He's not abiding by the laws of the elders or traditions. He's not keeping the Ten Commandments. This is inwardly a going outwardly of what's inside this guy. Whatever flows from inside a person tells what a person is. You can hide all kinds of things inside of you, but sooner or later it's going to come out. The real you. And this guy is showing the love of God because he has found God in a way that is so real to him that it's coming out. Verse 5. Now send men to Joppa, and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging with Simon a tanner, whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what you must do. And when the angel who spoke to him had departed, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier from among those who waited on him continually. So when he explained all these things to him, he sent them to Joppa. The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up on the house to pray about the sixth hour. Now the sixth hour would probably be, be around eight or nine o'clock in the morning. Their time's different. This would be the traditional time that most Jews would be praying. So Peter's up on the housetop, like normal, praying. Verse 10, he became very hungry because 
it was about that time to eat, and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance, to a dream, not asleep, but something where you can recognize what's going on, that you're alert to. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance, and he saw heaven opened. Can you imagine that? Stephen saw that while he was being stoned. He saw the heavens opened up. Can you imagine the idea of looking and seeing heaven open up? Not the skies, but heaven itself, the place where God abides. And an object, like a great sheet bound at the four corners, descending to him and let down to the earth. Wow. What's going to happen? What's going on? Peter's probably wondering. Verse 12. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, birds of the air. Now you knew the Jews had a strict diet on what they could eat. Certain birds, certain cattle, certain wildlife, certain insects, certain things in the ocean. They could not eat anything else because it would make them contaminated. It would be against the law. So Peter sees these things, and a voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Sounds like a command, doesn't it? Rise, Peter, kill and eat. No choice. But Peter said, No so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And a voice spoke to him again the second time. What God has cleansed, you must not call common. Whoa. Something just changed in the food menu that the Jews had. God just changed something. Peter is the only one that knows about it. What are all the other Jews going to think of him? What are the religious leaders going to do to him? This was done three times. Number three again. And the object was taken up into heaven again. Now Peter, now while Peter wondered within himself what this vision which he had seen meant, Behold, the men who had been sent from Cornelius made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. And they called and asked whether Simon, whose surname was Peter, was lodging there. While Peter thought about it, the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, go down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Command again. You got no choice, Peter. You got to do this. Unless you want to disobey. And we know what happens when you disobey. There's going to be some consequences. Then Peter went down to the men who had been sent to him from Cornelius and said, Yes, I am he whom you seek. For what reason? Have you come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, one who fears God and has a good reputation among all the nation of the Jews, was divinely instructed by a holy angel to summon you to his house and hear, hear words from you. Then he invited them in and lodged him, and on the next day, Peter went away with him, and some brethren from Joppa accompanied them. 
Oh, wait a minute. Here we go again. Peter, you can't go with these men. They are Gentiles. You'll be contaminated. Two strikes, Peter. First, you want to eat things that God now says is clean and you want to go with Gentiles. Boy, you're in trouble. The story doesn't end there, but that's where we're going to stop. So here we have a Gentile whom the Lord has taken notice as, as being one who is loving God and loving the people that God has placed under him, asking to be associated with a, a Jew, which he knows that's not common, but he's obeying. Then you have Peter, a Jew, a good Jew, one who is spontaneous, denied Jesus three times, and now he has been told to eat because everything is clean. And then he accepts the Gentiles coming in his health. And then the next morning he's going to go with them to see Cornelius. What is going to happen? What kind of a mess is Peter digging himself into? But he's going. He's being obedient. He's not being fearful like the night that Jesus was betrayed by him. He's got the courage to go and do things now that he had previously not to do. Remember, the book of Acts is more about the Holy Spirit's working within the church than it is Peter, John, Saul, Paul, the rest of them. It's, it's the empowerment of the church. Without the Holy Spirit, Peter and the rest of these guys would not be able to do what we're reading here. But in this case, Peter is being used by God as we see. I don't want to spoil the rest of it. I want to save it for next time. Lord, again, bless these words that I'm ready to penetrate our hearts, our emotions, our minds, our train of thinking to be more like Jesus. Less of us and more like Jesus, that people might see the love of you and us and not us for who we really are. In Jesus' name, amen.